What's going on, guys? Lori Agrochek here with the Vibe Tech at the Vibe Tech, and today we're going to learn about Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin and how you can make money with it? I'm actually here with an amazing, amazing person, amazing friend. His name is Alex Nanos. Come here, my man. Right, Give me a hug. Thank you for letting me in. For sure, for sure. Yeah. This is the man, guys. This is the man that knows everything about Bitcoin. Not everything. Not everything. Not Nobody everything. knows everything. Right? No, no. A uh, few, few people might think they do, but not, 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 not completely everything. All right, man. So tell us your story, man. How did you get into Bitcoin? Uh, basically, I got into Bitcoin late. Unfortunately, I wish I got into it many years ago when I first heard about it. Um, kind of like a lot of other people out there, I was very skeptical. And I think the reason I was skeptical is I didn't really understand a lot of it. I didn't understand what the purpose of it was, what it was, how it was created. And I, I just didn't really pay attention to it because I come from a background of traditional stock trading. Uh, my family's been doing that for a long, long time, and and so they had, you know, obviously never heard of it, and so I kind of just brushed off. And fast forward uh, a couple years later, I really started to see it take off, and then I just didn't know how to get into it, and I still brushed it off as if it was. What you know, year is this? Where are we at? We're probably getting up into like late sixteen at this point. Sixteen, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. and then uh, in seventeen, I had a couple friends actually get into it um, on a small scale. And, uh, you know, they started to, to trade, and then basically at the beginning of the year, I, I got it myself on a lower level. Kind of lost, you know, in the, in the jungle of cryptocurrency in general. Uh, I just started doing a lot of research, just like, what, what is this? How does this work? Where does it come from? How do I trade it? And most importantly, how do I make money doing it? That, that was that most was, important. Yeah, of course. That's the most important thing uh, at the time. And... Um, yeah, so that basically it brings up to current day. I've, I've kind of gotten an education and, and uh, a lot of experience and um, fell in love with it and got, got addicted. You're making money! Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely doing well. It's doing, very good. Doing well. Yeah. Very humble of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, um, we have a QA and a section, too. Um, let me tell you about how I actually got started in Bitcoin. It was actually 2014. Um, and... It was because of Silk Road. Uh, remember the freaking Silk yeah, Road? The Silk which is totally Road, yeah. bad and whatever, yeah, but yeah. who cares? Like, yeah, that was another th And honestly, uh, with Bitcoin and Silk Road at the time, those two things were in my mind at the same time. So potentially Bitcoin could have got clouded by that. And that might have been one of the reasons why I didn't even really look into it. Because I had heard about Silk Road and I had heard about some people having experience good and some people bad, but most of it was just myth. And so I think it just all kind of turned into mist in my eyes. And then that, that's kind of what delayed me years, which financially sucks. Yeah, but, you know, but, yeah. we're made here. But that, that's interesting. I didn't know you were uh, yeah. back in those days. Back too. in 2014, bro, I was, like, fresh out of high school. I, think I graduated in 2013. Me and my friends were just, like, going drugs, I guess. <laughs> like, so that's why we were into the Silk Road at that time. And, um, no. I learned a lot about Bitcoin. Um, I actually was was in like an affiliate marketing thing, and it paid me out in Bitcoin, and that's actually okay. when I got to actually touch and do things with Bitcoin. Um, yeah, started off with Coinbase actually. Yeah. Um, wow. All right, so you want to tell people what is Bitcoin exactly? If you don't know what Bitcoin is, totally, Bitcoin is basically a decentralized form of currency. It's cryptocurrency, which um, cryptography is how Bitcoin exists. And the benefits of it are basically is not no, no, not one sole entity can control Bitcoin. Um, there isn't a, a government, a bank, or a single organization that can control it or also can track it. Um, that's a good thing in a lot of ways. And also some people might demonize that in a lot of ways, like maybe it's a black market currency. Well, it's not because, again, why should one entity be in control of Anything. All of our money, right. let alone anything. So that's, and also it, it, it you know, um, it, it gives us instant connection to other people when, you know, if, if I was, say, wanted to make a deal or send someone money in another country and they said, okay, well, you know, let's say it's uh, Japan and they, yeah, right. you know, and then we have to go through the exchange rate. But at the end of the day, it's much easier to use a, a Bitcoin 
say, hey, no matter what, what they're looking at on their trade platform, they know what their Bitcoin's worth. I know what mine's Bitcoin's worth. I'm saying that one Bitcoin, that's it. There's no U.S. dollar thing, and I don't have to fill out an IRS form. Peer-to-peer lending, man. Literally, yeah, literally. Yeah, literally. So it's a huge network of us connected as we should have been a long time ago, but now we're finally getting there to where we can instantly send currency to each other without interference. And that that's that's basically the main um, goal of Bitcoin. And that's how that's why it was created to, to get us to that point. And we're we're almost there on a day to day basis. Yeah. Uh, there are some uh, I've seen them even locally here in Tampa. There are, you know, some stores that actually have the Bitcoin symbol on the windows, and we are able to start actually using them. Yeah. It's a little hard because you know you have to use a, a wallet and this and that. A lot of people they don't, you know, we don't really have a debit card system yet for it, but it, we're we're pretty close. It's it's really exciting. Yeah, actually, what attracted me to Bitcoin at first, and what attracted my family to it also, um, was the decentralization aspect. Yeah, of absolutely. It. Like, why is the government in our stuff, man? Like. Why do the banks need to control so much? I mean, I get why. It's an age-old question. You know, this has been going on since the pharaohs. You know, nothing's changed. So people think of money and banks of of, uh, what we we use on our phone app, you know. But, again, money and wealth was being controlled millennia ago by the the same type of entities. And, you know, it, it, it was just one organization or one king or queen or one leader being able to basically control everyone's wealth. Think of the Renaissance and, you know, basically everyone got taxed to death to support either a war of some kind, uh, a wealth of some kind by one king. Or religion of some kind. Or religion of some kind. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And again, that's one organization being able to control a whole continent. It's crazy. Yeah. And so but this, it's reality. Which is reality. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And it, and it really happened and we are kind of taken away from that now. And we don't realize that at the end of the day, you think you might have money in your bank account, but that is controlled. You know, your your hard-earned money is being controlled, is being watched constantly, and everything you do is reported by oh, by yeah. your 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 friendly neighborhood banker that you think is your friend is reporting every single transaction that you do to our good friends at the IRS. Yeah, and so. Bitcoin, thank God, is completely anonymous. It is yeah. completely anonymous. Completely anonymous. So, um, another question. How do you get Bitcoins? Bitcoins, uh, there's a few different ways to do it. Obviously, it's all going to be online. Um, we don't have like Bitcoin trading on the stock floor like we do with traditional stocks. So it's, you're going to have to sign up onto a um, you know trading platform. There's a lot to choose from. Um, I suggest if you're looking into getting into it here soon, uh, which you should be, look at what trading platform is the best, has the lowest fees, is the most secure, get registered on there, and then go from yeah, from there. I use Gemini personally, and that, that's if you're just more. starting off, I would recommend Coinbase. Coinbase you know. is also very popular. It's very good. Yeah, especially it's very easy to. That's you know that they give you good instruction on what to do, and it's pretty simple. User friendly. User friendly. Yeah. yeah. New friendly. New friendly. <laughs> that, that yeah, gaming term yeah. Yeah. Um. So another question: How can I make money with Bitcoin? There's a couple different ways. Uh, you can make money. Well, there's a lot of different ways you can make money with Bitcoin. Um, some people. Get it to hold it, and they're basically saying, "Hey, I, I want to buy Bitcoin at today's market value, hold it, and let it go up." Um, other people, like myself, I buy Bitcoin and I chop it into altcoins, which are alternative coins. Yes, um, that's where it's at. And that's and, and I'm an active trader, so there's going to be a little bit of a difference there. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it, no matter what you do, you know, either one's going to be good. Uh, it's just again with Bitcoin, you're just if you're just gonna hold Bitcoin and trade Bitcoin on its own, you know, it, it's just like a stock. It's it's gonna be you're putting one egg in your basket instead of a full basket of eggs, um, which can be risky, can be huge return. It just depends, you know. Like in the last couple of days, even we've seen massive swings with Bitcoin. Uh, we saw it drop down to in the eights, eight thousand dollar ranges again and go up, and we peaked over like eleven five at one point, yeah. which is insane. I think that's when I took the screenshot. Maybe it was like eleven one. Yeah, it, it went up. It went up, and I was even surprised by that. I didn't think it was gonna go that high this early. I thought it was at least gonna pass January first before Dude, we saw it yes, at eleven. Man, yeah. I thought like at, I thought ten, 10 was wasn't crazy. was gonna happen like yeah. mid December. Not even December yet, and we're past ten. And yeah. I'm just like, is so, this real life? It's it's so, like, it's very real, and it's uh, it you know people are shocked by it, but we just gotta go with it. 
Yeah, but hey, you know, it's like it's not a bad thing. It's bad yeah. in, in, in the sense of people saying, hey, you know, I only have X amount of dollars. I can't even afford a half a Bitcoin or whatever. But it, that doesn't really matter. That shouldn't that shouldn't you know be a negative thing to you. Um, you should still buy in because regardless, your 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 dollars are still going to buy you you know five thousand dollars in Bitcoin, which would be a half Bitcoin today, give or take. And at least you you have it, so you can still do monstrous moves with that. You can you know even if it's less than that, if if you have a few hundred dollars, yeah. put it into it, buy Bitcoin, trade it into altcoins. There are tons of coins out there that I'm in huge amounts of money, U.S. dollars in that are pennies. But again, it's I'm in them now because I'm waiting for them to go up. Not obviously the ten thousand dollars, but if I buy a coin at four cents and it goes up to a dollar, and I bought that in volume, that's a concern. So this is yeah. what I think. This is how I see Bitcoin. Um, you know, I see Bitcoin as MySpace, and okay. we're waiting to find Facebook. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like, absolutely. That's that's how I see it. Because Bitcoin yeah. is huge because of brand, but like you said to me earlier, um, the technology is the best. No, so again, Bitcoin, you know, was being created honestly over a decade ago. You know, actually, oh yeah, much like ninety. Well, yeah, and the points where it actually started to take form was, you know, you're looking at ten to twelve years, and fast forward till now. The, one of the main reasons why we're not using Bitcoin as an actual form of day to day currency, like, hey, I want to buy this this coffee drink here with a Bitcoin or whatever it would come out to be is. Um, a lot of it has to do with the registration time. It takes a long time for that to register and confirm, like the confirmation time of the transaction. Uh, when it goes to the blockchain and confirms, it would, it's too long. So that's why we have Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash, if you haven't heard of that, it came out about a month ago. Yeah, um, I think it was about a month ago. And um, Bitcoin Cash is basically just a revised version of Bitcoin. It made it almost instantaneous. It made it. Uh, much easier for merchants to be able to use it. So the guy at your local gas station or Target store or whatever, it made it made them uh, it made it a lot more easy for them to be able to use a cryptocurrency uh, in the registration and confirmation time. It's almost instant instead of being you know delayed. Yeah. And the fees, the fees are a lot less with Bitcoin Cash for merchants than they were for traditional Bitcoin. So that was you know again after about a decade they came up with this one and Bitcoin Cash is probably what you would end up. What we would probably be end up using on a day to day basis, and Bitcoin be because again, we don't pay for groceries at Publix with a bar of gold, right? But our money is well, supposedly, supposedly. based off gold. But again, right. if you if you say okay, uh, I have a hundred dollars U.S. dollars, and that's based supposedly based on our gold. Well, obviously, I don't hand you a, a little brick of gold this big. We use paper currency. So again, it's you know the Bitcoin Cash is going to be that paper currency, which reflects back to the value of Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, all right. So another question: What determines Bitcoin's price? We do. Here, just, here. Like, just like everything else, we we determine the price. Um, there is nobody that owns a majority share of Bitcoin. Um, you know, there is nobody that can just say, "Hey, you know, I'm going to sell off all my stocks." Obviously, people hold a lot of Bitcoin. Um, you know, and it would create a little bit of a spike here or there, maybe a drop, depending on someone having a massive amount. But again, not not one person can control it. So we basically, as as the open market, control what its value is. Because again, it's not based off of a precious metal. It's not platinum. It's not copper. It's not anything. It's just again, it's only online. That's the only way it exists is by by an electronic device. So we completely control the value of what it does on a day to day basis. So second question. Um, can Bitcoin become worthless? Uh, you know, Bitcoin. I don't have a straight answer for that. Um, obviously, I hope not. I don't foresee that happening. I don't really know how that could happen in the sense of worthless. You know, it's everybody says, "Hey, this is trash. We're selling all of our stuff. We don't, we don't, we don't want to use cryptocurrency. And we don't think it's valuable." Yeah, that could happen. I mean, again, but is it going to happen? That's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, everybody that sees the value of Bitcoin knows why it was created. The hype now has skyrocketed in the last few months, maybe two to three months. It has gotten enormous. I mean, I was buying, you know, I was just buying into Bitcoin in August in a high twos, and we're at $11,000 of Bitcoin. 
now. So again, people are hearing about it, they're seeing it, they're seeing more people get into it, and they're like, hey, I can do that too. Yeah. So again, uh, would it become worthless? And, and uh, when it gets back down to the, you know, the, the ground roots and the concrete of what Bitcoin is really meant for, other than the value of it is meant to use on a day-to-day -day basis, no, it's not going to become. Yeah, I don't think so. I think the dollar or any other like country currency would become worthless before the Bitcoin. Yeah, you know, um, again, those are both. You know, we're 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 spitballing here. This is these are complete speculations um, of worst case scenarios. Uh, again, we wouldn't want our regular currency to go down to nothing either, because then you know, because then obviously, how do you pay for a Bitcoin at that point? You know, um, but it's a lot less. You know, as far as Bitcoin goes, if if you had a country um, like somewhere, let's say in in. Uh, you know, Africa or the, or the Mediterranean, and, and like when Greece and all that happened, that made our our stock market completely crumble in oh, yeah. 2011 and 12. And I took a few shit from that at that time, and you know that was just because of their economy and their money, and which caused you know the U.S. currency to go down as well. That would not happen with Bitcoin. It's, you know, again, you're you're gonna you might you might create hype and hysteria with regular currencies and maybe, maybe regular stock trading to people, but people that hold Bitcoin were were kind of just sitting off the sidelines. It might happen a little bit, but it's not going to take a plunge like that did, which that was very dangerous. And we saw um, almost a very, very small, minute reflection of the, the 20s there. And we saw people, hey, this Mediterranean country just collapsed in value, so I'm going to sell all my stocks, which is the worst thing you could possibly ever do for yourself. But a lot of people are skittish, and we're talking about Americans at this point, and that's what happened. And then that caused a big, big, big drop in our whole, just our... You know everything and uh, value of the country, and, and the whole point of this is to kind of get away from that. Yeah. So, absolutely. all right. Next question is: Is Bitcoin a bubble? No. Um, and the reason why I'm going to say that is, uh, it's just it, it's too valuable, and the the ground root of why it exists is too valuable to be a bubble. Um, I think once people even the people that are just getting into it for the money uh, realize its actual use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, what that value, that, that being invaluable, um, I think it, it'll determine it itself as a rock solid, hey, like this is gonna be our next form of currency. We are going to use this very soon. And no, this isn't just some kind of hype. This isn't just some kind of, hey, this is a crazy fad. I wanna get onto it now and cash out and leave. No, that's not what's gonna happen here at all. It's, yeah, I don't it's, think it's fad. I think this no, is just the beginning no, no. of the future. I, I, I thought it was a fad, you know, again, like, you know, a few years ago. I, I and, and that was because I was like, educated on it, number one. Number two, I just didn't really hear about it that much. I only heard about it from certain people and didn't care. And then look at me now, you know. Right. Now it's, it's my favorite look thing. Look at you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. And, um, oh, this is my favorite. Is Bitcoin a Ponzi scheme? <laughs> no, Bitcoin is, is not a fun scheme. I can tell you, though, it, it can turn into one only in one way. And I'll tell you about this because this has happened to me, and I've been pitched Ponzi schemes. Many oh, times. yeah, yeah. We, got we pitched, actually together. We got pitched a Ponzi scheme like a couple weeks ago. That yeah, yeah. We, uh, a Ponzi scheme is not what Bitcoin is. Um, the only way Bitcoin could become a Ponzi scheme in the sense of uh, having anything to do with a Ponzi scheme is if someone came to you with a program and said, hey, if you sell these energy drinks for me or, or promote my whatever, I'm going to pay you in Bitcoin. That could happen, and that might even be happening now. Yes, yeah, so you need to be wary of that. If, if anyone approaches you with something that like promising and maybe paying you in cryptocurrency um, for a certain service, and it seems like a Ponzi scheme or you know a pyramid, something like that, just say no. You know, that, yeah. I mean, yeah. just do research yeah, yeah, on whatever exactly. you're trying to invest, whether it be Bitcoin, whether it be a Ponzi scheme, whether it be affiliate marketing, whatever you're looking into, just research it, understand yeah. it, and then invest in it. Just make sure you understand it. If they, if they promise you free trips to the Bahamas, I'd say stay away. Yeah, that's, that's usually the number one giveaway. If you rack up a certain amount of points, we're going to send you the Tahiti or whatever. I mean, that's instantly when I'm like, Man, that's hilarious. I can't believe we got finished. That did. That was about an hour of our life gone that we got. Gone. It was actually we're valuable people, guys. 
Like very valuable. Yeah, I guess. Wait, like, it, it was a cool product though. They they snuck in with a, a credit card product that was actually pretty cool. That might hopefully come out eventually. Um, they snuck in with that, and then uh, they, oh, I was like, hey, this is really cool. Maybe it's something I want to invest in. And then they said, oh, well, actually, I'm not selling you this. I'm selling you this program. And it, it was it was horrible. It was a joke. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um. Next question. What if someone bought up all the existing Bitcoins? Well, they'd have to go around to each and every person, you know, in the, literally, literally. Each and every um, we're at about we're a little we're in the high sixteen million Bitcoins at this point. Um, so you'd, you'd have to go around to each and every person and convince them to sell their share. Um, uh, also, I mean, you know, that that's that's an enormous amount of money at this point. Um, that's not really. I would not that, sell you guys my bitcoins. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, at that point, then you'd have one person controlling every bitcoin, which is low key crazy. Yeah, it's really <laughs> crazy. I, I don't really, you know, I don't know. Again, some people tell me, hey, what if a major player comes in, buys up, you know, let's let's say they put a billion dollars U.S. dollars into the market of bitcoin and just buy that much in bitcoin and then hold it, maybe sell it to cause a price drop. Well, that, you know, that can happen, but again, it's 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 gonna be, hey, if, if, for him to come in with that much, or him or her to come in with that much money and say, hey, I, I wanna buy a billion dollars, US dollars in Bitcoin, again, we're selling them that. They, they just don't, you know, come out of thin air. Again, he's not mining Bitcoin, he's right. just saying, hey, I wanna buy it. So we would have to say, oh, well, <laughs> you know, at that point, if, if, if these thousands of people are selling it off at today's market price of whatever ten thousand X dollars it is, and then it keeps getting sold. Well, he's going to end up at probably eighteen grand for Bitcoin before he finishes his billion dollar investment. And then at that point, we made some money. Bitcoin prices now probably would drop after that, and then we could potentially just rebuy from if, if you know. So it's again, it, it's a crazy situation scenario that I don't really know how. It could actually be accomplished, but you know, it's no one can buy up all the Bitcoin. Yeah. It's not gonna it's crazy. It's not gonna work. Because there's always there's even gonna be that one person hiding in their basement that says, No, this is my Bitcoin, I'm not gonna sell it to you. The so, miners, yeah. man. The miners, the miners yeah. are the ones that blockchain. Yeah. Um another question. What if someone creates a better digital currency? There we have Bitcoin Cash. As we addressed earlier, Bitcoin Cash is a better digital currency than Bitcoin itself. And the whole point of that was to make it easier to actually use. So it's already happened. Nothing, nothing happened. They're just, you know, again, all, we talk about altcoins. There's tons of, of other cryptocurrencies out there. there there's a Dogecoin, you know, that, that dog emoji. You know, the one, you know, the ones that's like Doge under it. You ever seen that emoji? Yeah, yeah. there's one like, like that with that little, that little Pomeranian on it. Um, there's all kinds of other cryptocurrencies. I don't know why I was thinking about the Target dog. It's like that, but no, it's like that yeah. little dog. Yeah, just you'll look it up later. Yeah. But there's there's tons of coins out there, um, and that's where actually most of my holding is is in alt coins. Uh, Neo coin, that's a Chinese based coin that I'm I really like. I'm into that one. I've been riding that for a while now, and I think that one's going to do really well, especially for them since it's kind of like a home. Point for them. Oh, it's only in China. Well, yeah. it's it's China-based coin, yeah. So it's, to trade that, you have to have a foreign exchange platform, which I do, and that would, where you'd be able to buy Neo coin. Um, there's uh, tons of other ones um, that are out there that are constantly being made. There's some that are worth under a penny at this point that are just being born today and tomorrow, and and all of them are just revised versions, but they all revert back to Bitcoin value. Right. And at the end of the day, is they just say, hey, you know, we're going to make these coins, and then and then if you want to value, what do we value it off of at point zero 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 one Bitcoin? So, you know. So to buy these altcoins, people need to invest in Bitcoin. Yes. With Ethereum you would need to, you would need to change your hard currency into Bitcoin or Ethereum, which would whatever you know, into, into one of those coins to then or send over to a foreign trading platform and buy whatever altcoins you're interested in, particularly. But eventually, yes, you do have to put your money because again. These other coins not accept you as currency as right. you can't buy. You know, uh, we value it. You know, if you were to, you know, on your screen, it'll show you what each of those coins is worth in U.S. dollars around. It, it's just a guesstimate. Um, but again, it's uh, you. You can't sell that for U.S. dollars. You have to sell it back into Bitcoin, and then from there you can exchange your Bitcoin. Yeah, back. I actually don't even buy with Bitcoin. I just solely buy with Ethereum. 
Yeah, no, yeah, Ethereum's huge. So again, yeah, Ethereum has saw a huge spike in the last month as well. I think it was in the $470. Uh, I think it was today and hit around there. I don't, I don't oh, remember. Oh, today? Yeah, I, I believe so. But again, it was it was hovering around like that 300 for a while. Back yeah, 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 yeah. Just right Literally there, two, 290s. It was higher than it was. So you're talking about a 25% spike over maybe 30% almost in Ethereum alone. And some of the spikes I see on my daily trading platform, you know, it shows the, the, the day's top performers. I saw one the other day called ADA, ADA. Um, it was 227%. Wow. It was, a, it was a penny stock, you could call it that. But again, 227%. It's a lot. If you held a good amount of money in that, which I didn't, unfortunately, you'd you, you be doing real well. Where, where is their, like, focus at? What is their, like, what's their background? Actually, you know, that's one of the ones I wasn't even in. I just saw it on my chart, and then I started looking at it. Then a few people knew had it. And, again, I, I, there's so many out there, so many altcoins that exist. It's that I, I have to kind of stay in line with the ones I'm watching, and I'm watching the trends on what the, these particular ones are doing. And yet there's a 100 over here that I, I don't, you know what I mean? I, I, there's just, I'm on one person I can't right. keep up with. Each and every, it's almost just like the stock market. It's like, you know, you can have 15 or 25 or 30 stocks that you're watching, but again, there's still a thousand over here that. That are going to do well. Exactly, yeah, you just miss it. Yeah, it's just the way it is. But again, I saw it go, and then the next day it would drop back down, and you know, it was hovering. So it's pretty, you know, just, I'm, I, now I'm interested in it, and I'm just watching it. Have you heard of Ripple? Mm -hmm. Have you, what do you think about that? Because, like, at first I was into it, like, a couple months back, but now I'm, like, completely out of it. Well, I mean, we'll have to see. I, you know, again, it's just none of those things it's just speculative at this point. I don't have it. So uh, if I see it start to do well and I see it start to become um, on that daily, you know, performance chart where it's something I want to get in on, then yeah. But as of now, it hasn't really made much noise. Yeah, I mean, the only reason why I'm not into it is because uh, it's literally just banks. So there's no network, really. It's yeah. just banks. So. Yeah, we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, and then last question, what is Bitcoin mining and is it worth it? Yeah, so Bitcoin mining is what's referred to as the um, blockchain. And the way, the way Bitcoin mining and the blockchain works is the blockchain is a basically the database of each transaction. So every time you trade, uh, if I were to trade Laura Bitcoin um, through our codes and our, our exact keys that we send to each other, it's recorded. And people volunteer for this position. Um, they have to set up a computer to be able to do this as a blockchain. And they record each and every transaction that happens. Now, there are some algorithms that they have to figure out to be able to win that next spot in the chain. And again, this is something you can you have to research. We'll just keep it simple. Um, and when they win that, they actually get rewarded uh, for their service. And sometimes went up at like 12 Bitcoin at a time that is mine and once they complete that next link in the chain they, they get 12 Bitcoin um, so that could be at this today's price that could be insanely profitable but again the the skill sets you would need to that you really need to do your research and know what you're doing we're kind of getting into those like IT guys at this yeah, point yeah like you have and to crack the algorithm to crack the yeah, Bitcoin it, you have to build a supercomputer that can um, it, it, they are problem solving computers in the blockchain um, and they are literally solving codes and solving actual mathematical problems that secure our Bitcoin. This is why cryptocurrency is so secure because it's encrypted. Right. So to record all this and make this, you know, each transaction actually confirm and happen, these miners and the blockchain has to record that, put it into their ledger, and there it is. And now it's forever in that system. Yeah, man. Man, if I were would have gotten into mining back in the day, yep. like oh my god! Yeah, some people have some people have Bitcoin uh, on you know those the big old what were those called those disks? Not floppy disks, but the ones after them. Uh, I heard some people like, oh, I found I had like two Bitcoin on this from back in like two thousand and seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? I it was on Google. I saw that the other day. And somebody's like, oh, it's worth like you know twenty thousand dollars. Dude, I'm sure yeah. I have like a lost wallet somewhere. You could, you yeah, you need to look for it. I, I don't, I wish I did. I wish I had one with 100 Bitcoins sitting in it randomly, right. but I No, I, I swear, like, I had, like, three wallets, and I only have one of three, like, on me, like, with me, and I have no idea where they could have been. I just don't remember. The worst thing I heard is I was in a uh, 
conversation with somebody and they said, you know, in 2015, I sold, I had uh, 20 Bitcoin, or uh, 20 or 30 Bitcoin. And, like, I think I sold them for $500 at that point. In 2015? 2015. Oh, that, that was the price drop? Yeah. That, it was like a I don't remember exactly what the amount was, but he said it was some 500 to 1,000 US dollars. And he sold, sold the ball? Them for. Yeah. Fuck, he man. said for no reason, he just didn't care. And he's like, uh-huh. and he's like, I'm taking my play. And he's back in crypto trading now. But it's, you know, he's doing well now as it is. He's like, I can't believe that. You know, I mean, like, wow, that sucks. You learn from your mistakes. Yeah. That, that's, that's an expensive that's, loss, that, man. As of today, that would be over a quarter million dollars a day. Oh so, but, you know, again. You live in brand. Yep, yep. All right, well, these, those were all the questions I had. Do you have any Thank tips? You. Tips and tricks from the trade? Research. A lot, research. A lot of research. A lot of um, patience, due diligence. Again, if you're looking to get into trading, um, you know you need to be able to have the the assets to be able to leave. Don't don't use trading platforms as your daily checking account. Um, if you're going to put money in, you know make sure that's something you're able to live without for a little bit. Um, and not not saying that it would drop. It's just in the sense of I don't like any investment ever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's a lot of people you know approach me with and saying, hey, you know I really want to get into this, but I have this amount of money. Can I do this within a week or two weeks and I say you know yeah you can but um, you know don't don't get into it with an amount of money that you can't live without so whether that's fifty dollars or five hundred thousand dollars if you can't live without that money for the time it's in the market don't don't you know do whatever you're comfortable with and do whatever you know because again we're, we're here to to make you know money for ourselves we're here to invest uh, we're here to take as least amount of risks as possible and to improve our livelihood, not diminish our livelihood. Right. So we don't we don't sell our house. No. And, and, and don't tell our wife that we took out that third mortgage on our house. I mean, you can, but that's you know that's, that's, that's crazy. Bold, yeah. um, to be able to just invest in Bitcoin. So again, you do it within your limits and uh, get into it as soon as possible. That's my yeah. that's my number one advice. Is no, I get a lot of people that are like, "Is it too late? Is it too late?" No, no this no. is just the beginning, guys. Think about it as MySpace and the Facebook is yet to come, guys. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, we we're at we're at the high 16 millionth point of uh, amount of bitcoins that are out there. 21 million is the cap. If you, even if you were just trying to hold Bitcoin as a stock, once it hits that cap, which you know isn't going to be that far away from now. By 2020, um, right? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to hit that. Once we hit that, it's just going to skyrocket because the, the demand is, since there's going to be, again, it's the gold standard. Just can, it, just think of it as if gold could never be mined again in, in the dirt or the rocks of our planet. What you know, Today's gold is all we are left with forever. The price of gold is not going to be $1,200 anymore. It's going to go up to probably a million dollars per ounce or whatever you know what i mean and so the same thing with bitcoin once once it hits that 21 million mark and it's it, it's stopped it's going to go up a lot yeah man and 2020 it's already predicted to be at a million dollars one million dollars a coin guys that thing right there a million dollars right now it's what like 10 grand probably somewhere yeah, around we're, at, we're at that today i don't know let's see yeah. uh currently 10.9 so we're, we're banking on 11,000. So again, probably today is going to hit up in the 11,000 mark. And, uh, you know, it's not too late to get in on it. Again, even if you have whatever amount of money you have that you want to put in, don't don't feel, you know, don't be discouraged by that price. If you are discouraged by that price, get into Ethereum. You know, that's yeah. US-based coin. Ethereum is doing great right now. It's, if that's going up as well. Um, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit less volatile than Bitcoin. Um, it's staying around in that those 400 zones right now. It's not really having hundreds of dollars drops per day like Bitcoin does. But it's growing. No, it's growing, and it, you know, again, Ethereum is going to be the same thing. It, it, uh, a year from now, Ethereum is probably going to be making almost a thousand dollars. Yeah. My yeah. mom was actually the one that put me onto Ethereum. Yeah. yeah she, when it was at like forty-five dollars. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So th- th- that's another one. If you if you don't you know if you if you're discouraged from if you'd rather buy five Ethereum instead of X amount of Bitcoin, then buy that. That's fine. Either one is, you know, they're, they're all going to be relevant. So yeah. just get in as, as soon as you can. And if you're thinking about it, just do some research, spend the whole night doing your homework, maybe a week at most, but, you know, at least get signed up on the on the websites of your choosing, you know, re- 
research them, make sure they're good, and then um, that's it. Yeah. Good luck. And if you're new, um, like new to all of this, uh, just start off with uh, Coinbase, right? Like that's Coinbase the most user-friendly. Yeah. Um, Coinbase platform. is very simple. It's very easy to use. You're limited on that. I think it's like twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred. Dollars, yeah, dollars yeah, a month, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of people will come to me with, hey, how do I, you know, Coinbase, I use it, I like it, but I'm, I'm capped at $500 a week or whatever. Yeah. And that's a, what, what, and then I, I refer them to other training sites such as Gemini, you know, which, you know, once you're verified on there, you can do about 100 Bitcoin a day. Which is solid. Know, which is a lot. <laughs> it's yeah. solid. If, if, you, if you have that kind of volume capacity, then that's great. But yes, Coinbase, you can never do that. So again, yeah, start with Coinbase, it's good. You know, it'll, it'll get you started. Um, when you start making initial transactions, please do it with a very small amount of money, even if it's five or ten dollars. Test it. Make sure if you're sending, you know, Bitcoin to a wallet of some kind or another trading platform, test it first with a low amount of money. Make sure it deposits correctly, because as the website will probably prompt a little message before you click send, it'll say confirm that this is the address because if you send this somewhere else it's, it's gone. gone guys it's, gone. it's like, so gone please do not have your life savings in your first transaction go to a different wallet because you are never getting it back never. it's not going to happen and that is terrible i can't even, yeah. i can't even think about dude, that dude that freaks me out start, so whatever you you know when you purchase start with a small amount of money okay it works great I'm gonna do it again. It's, it's usually gonna be the same code. Just just refresh the screen. Do it the yeah. same exact steps you just did. Put in your keys. Done. It's very simple. Yeah. Just make sure you 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 know pay attention and, and don't get don't get too comfortable you know and, and make a mistake. Yeah. And also make sure you have a secure wallet. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's a yeah. As far as the wallet goes, you know, again, if if it's an online wallet, then that's fine. Just do your research. Make sure that one's good. And there are offline wallets as well. And those are basically bank vaults. Um, you know, you have many different devices out there that are an offline electronic device where you'll actually send your Bitcoin to physically. You'll take it off of the trading total. You'll, you'll take it out of the world at that point, and you can put it in a bank box. So that's actually yeah. do. Um, and so you, you can you can reserve them there, and you say, hey, this is my big. These are my Bitcoins. I want to take. I don't, I'm not going to trade these. I want to keep them saving. I want to save these. I'm going to put them into this wallet, and that's it. That if it's not online, it cannot be hacked. You know, it's a physical device. And, yeah. You know, the ledgers you can get them on Amazon for like yeah. for like a hundred bucks. Uh, some of them, yeah, some of them. It just depends on their, you know, their features. Some of them are don't have screens. You know, they have like LCD screens. And they're small. And they're like a hundred dollars. And other ones are like up in the thousand dollar range. And they have you know all kinds of readouts. And you know, it, it just depends on what you want to spend. You know, but again, it's 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 like buying it's it's a vault. And at that point, take that. Go put it in a bank box, put it in a safe in your Don't house. Lose it, Don't guys. lose it, guys. Yeah, yeah. Because again, once you take these out, that this is all permanent stuff. Like this, yeah. that it's not like you can say, hey, I, I buried that fifty dollar or uh, you know that that gold double eagle coin in my backyard in a tube sock. No, it, you need to you need to take care of it, and make sure it's safe at all times. Yeah, um, yeah. So like I said, put it in a bank box, put it in a someplace in your home that you know is fireproof, something like that. Yeah, and that way you can protect your your investment because that's the most important thing is protecting your assets. Yeah, man. Please. So what do you what do you say to people that are like, um, I can't see it. Like I I, I think it's fake because it's all Bitcoin. Like, Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin. They're like it's yeah, not like I, in my hand, I don't believe in it. Yeah, um, I would say to them, well, you know, a hundred years ago when you were buying railroad stock or your dad or grandpa was buying railroad stock, were they holding a piece of the railroad in their hand? No. So it's you know again that, that that argument is strange. I've heard it before. I've heard it say this is this is a you know it, it's just something that's foo foo and um, it's just gonna go away and disappear. It's not it's not gonna go away and disappear, guys. Just again, please, like uh, I can't you know uh, I won't put my, enough, I won't like put my foot down here. and say it's, it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't matter that if you want, you can buy one of those big. You know, like people, if it makes you feel better. You can yeah, buy a Bitcoin and then that. buy the little uh, gold or whatever they're made out, silver Bitcoins, if you want to hold and say, hey, I, you know, but again, I think that's lame. I don't know. It is. is. It, it, but if you physically wanted to, you know, so hold have it, something, I guess, whatever. They're more of a gag than anything. They don't do anything. Yeah. If you own one of these, doesn't mean you own a Bitcoin. It's just you bought this physical little coin. You literally some, just bought that. Yeah, right? it doesn't mean anything. It's worth whatever you paid for it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but again, it's, it's, it's very real. Yeah. Extremely real, and, and anybody that uses uh, an online device, 
you know, if you use social media, you know how important our world, or how much our world revolves around social media and just computers in general and technology, and, and this is the way it's going to go. So we're getting away from that precious, precious metal currency to, you know, yeah. cryptocurrency. Yeah, man. Oh, my God. Here we just are. blows my mind because so many people out there are just like, how do I get into it? And then there's the other people that are like, this shit ain't real. And it's just like. There's know. a lot of people out there that are on both fences still. Um, I had somebody not that long ago uh, say to me, uh, you know, here, I, I think this stuff is trash and I, I, I think it's really stupid. And I, I do, I trade these kind of stocks, you know, real, like uh, regular stocks. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't want to do that. And that was when Bitcoin was hovering in that seven, eight thousand dollar range, you know, about two weeks three weeks ago and literally a week later after it spiked up to a 11 grand same person messages me in my private inbox says hey man I can't deny this anymore I need to get on this train and I, I said okay let's go I said I'm glad you changed your mind let's go you know, like yeah and I'm like hey that's great because yeah I didn't want to argue with them at the time and I was like hey that's if you don't feel comfortable don't do it but at the same time I was just rolling my eyes like all right bro whatever you know you're gonna be the one kicking yourself in the butt in a yeah. year from now, especially, you know, and so you know, by, by this time next year, you'll definitely see Bitcoin um, in those high, high dollar amounts, you know, probably by February, March, we're probably going to be looking at, you know, no less than 15K. I would bet my money on that Easy. all day, uh, hovering around that, easily hovering around that, probably, it's probably more like 25 by February, March, April, and then after that, who knows. So a year from now, next November, we'll see. If it's 50 grand, we'll, we'll, we'll hope for that, and then uh, hopefully we all got in at the right time. Yeah, man. I did the altcoins. So coin. much and money. The smaller coins, too. Yeah, those are they're going to go up. They're, you know, it's like if you say, hey, you know, I've, I've got $100 to, to get. I'm going to buy $100 in Bitcoin. I'm going to send that over and buy an altcoin that's worth a penny today. You know, in U.S. currency, it's worth a penny. Right. And I'm going to hold that. Yeah, I mean, if that turns into 100 bucks. Yeah, that coin. If you bought that at that price, and that turns into a dollar after a penny, or that turns into two, three dollars, you just you made a great return on yeah, a very small investment. The real freaking play is all coins. Like, yeah. if you really want to yeah. make money, not with Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is just an investment. The real money play is all coins and investing in them and waiting on them. Maybe in a, a yeah. month or two. Yeah. Double, all, all of the largest percentages of gains are in the altcoins, and that's why I trade altcoins. I, I don't really hold many Bitcoin, um, maybe under 10 uh, total do I hold in Bitcoin. Um, all my money is in altcoins, and because every day they're trading constantly. I'm buying in here. I'm waiting maybe a week to two weeks, you know, here, and then they hit a point. I sell them or I keep them. It just depends. Like, but it, all, all coins is the active trading. Bitcoin, yeah, I mess around with Bitcoin a little bit, but the, the, the percentage gains are a lot more on the altcoins than they are on the Bitcoins. So even a thousand dollar swing on Bitcoin is big. Two thousand dollar swing is big on Bitcoin is still big, but you're talking twenty percent right. on all coins. Like I told you earlier, that one went up two hundred and twenty seven percent in a day or yeah. two days. You know, that was nuts. So it's like that's where the the biggest gains, percentage gains are. So you know, you invest if you invest a hundred thousand dollars into a penny stock, it's still or a penny coin, it's still it's still hundred grand. And if that goes up a hundred percent, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's called math it's, guys. Yeah, it's math. <laughs> yeah. so that, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, on a day -to -day basis. So I want to thank you so much yeah, for course. taking the time to come out here. I love absolutely. you man. Yeah, You're pretty awesome. I hope you guys learned something very important from this super intelligent man right here, Alex thank Nanos. You. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching. I've seen that we've been trending at like eight people watching at a time, um, which is super awesome. It doesn't even feel like we were on here for 45 minutes. No, wow. Like, what? That's a long time. Yeah, you, so it's crazy. You, thank you for having a deal with us for so long. Yeah, yeah. right? Like, we're just blabbing. Blabbing about money. Blabbing about <laughs> money, but it's fun. You know, it, it's one of those things where, hey, we can just sit down and everybody talk about it and just, you know, we can broadcast out information. You know, some people that just have no idea about you know cryptocurrency in general. Maybe they learned something today. And other people that know a lot more than me looked at me and said, hey, good for you, man. This is all beginner stuff. Hey, again, it's, you know, any way that can benefit at all, that's, that's our goal here. Totally. So, so happy to do that. 
are are they free to message you if they Absolutely, want to yeah, any questions? Yeah, yeah. Any questions? Yeah, you can go ahead and uh, you know she's gonna tag me obviously in the video and just yeah, give me sure. a, give me a shout. Um, you know, I'll, I'll get you on Messenger. Or, um, you know, you can post it on my wall. Do whatever you gotta do, and just we'll we'll see what what questions you have and any way I can help. We'll definitely try and get you to get you where you need to be. For sure, for sure. Well, thank you guys again for watching. Laura, go take it here with Divide Tech, Tampa's number one growth hack marketing firm. I'll see you guys later.